You want to exercise your freedom on the world, but you don't want to exercise it on yourself. Oh, you'll shut the world down for telling you what you can't do, but you won't say nothing to you when you don't do what you're supposed to do. You're not getting up when you're supposed to get up. You procrastinate, but you let you slide. You want to hold them accountable? Hold yourself accountable too. You always want to blame other people. You want to hold other people to the fire, but you're not holding yourself to the fire. There are things you like, you have absolutely no control. You are like a slave to you. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? Because really the only person that you're fighting every day is yourself. It's not your boss. It's not this or that. Yeah, those are all obstacles. A lot of them you cannot control those obstacles, but you can control yourself. We have to regain control of our mind. How you gain mental toughness, how you become the person you want to be, is constantly facing the things that you don't want to face. The only way anything gets accomplished, you got to work hard. Get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. You've got to outwork, outlast, and outperform the person you were yesterday, becoming better than your past self. When you continue to do that day after day after day, you're unstoppable. You're on a relentless pursuit of excellence. And the only way to get to that point is by disciplining yourself every single day of your life, no matter what. Do not allow yourself to slide down that slope of complacency. You've got to hold the line on the seemingly insignificant things, watching yourself, observing how you're handling yourself. Because the difference between the most successful people in the world and the people who are barely getting by is they have become phenomenal at disciplining themselves on a daily basis. Forcing themselves to do things that are hard and don't come easy. Holding themselves accountable for the actions they're taking and the effort they're putting in. You have got to push yourself. Your family's counting on you. Your dreams are counting on you. Everything you've ever wanted is counting on you. You're not average, stop acting like you. You're not average. Why you being average? You're not average. Why you being good when you're not good? You great. You phenomenal. When you gonna step up to the plate? Start with the little disciplines. Get excited over the little disciplines and get right on those because those will lead to the big ones. You can't handle the big challenges in life unless you take on the little ones. Make a list of all the things you can do. Get right on those. Discipline yourself for those both for the results and for the muscle and for the practice. So that when life hands you some big challenges, you'll be ready, you'll have the muscle. What should a child do with a dollar? Let me give you the best advice I've got. This is called sort of middle of the road scenario, and I'll show you how these numbers may change, but here's what I teach. Kids never spend more than 70 cents. Now you gotta pick some number. When I met Mr. Shoaff, I was at about 110%. But remember this, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep becomes your downfall. Good little scenario. So here's the number that I found works best in developing a good financial plan. Never spend more than 70 cents out of every dollar from now on. Now kids ask me what? What do you do with the other 30 cents? Here's my best advice. 10 cents, charity. 10% charity. Supporting worthy projects, helping people who cannot help themselves. Some churches teach tithe, peace, portion, turning back part of what you take out. Excellent, excellent philosophy. That's what that 10% is. And nothing teaches children responsibility and character better than generosity. No school, no class, no teacher can teach character better than the simple act of generosity. 10 cents out of every dollar. Now you can pick your own number. I'm just giving you my best scenario. Now the time to start this is when the amounts are small. Easy to give a dime out of a dollar. I'm telling you, kids will give you 10 cents out of every dollar. It's part of their philosophy if you sell them on it. 
And that's the time to start when it's easy, 10 cents out of a dollar. A little harder to give 100,000 out of a million. Someone says, oh, if I had a million dollars, I'd give 100,000. I'm not that sure. We better start you early when the amounts are small, so it'll all be set in when the big amounts start to come. So 10 cents for charity. The next 10 cents I call active capital. Capital meaning try to make a profit yourself. We live in a capitalistic society. Everybody now wants to join capitalism. That's why the walls are coming down. Capital belongs in the hands of the people. That's where the genius is. So the genius is to try to show a profit. Buy and sell. Render service, show a profit. Now here's what I teach kids. Profits are better than wages. Wages are okay. But wages help you make a living. Profits help you make a fortune. The key is to just understand philosophically a little simple economic scenario. Active capital means try your best to show a profit. Now there's many ways to show a profit, not just money. Touch something, leave it better than you found it. That's a profit. Some profits are intangible. Some profits are tangible. Long before Earth Day, for all sophisticated people, it was very proper when you left your hotel room to turn out the lights. All educated people. Why? Leave a profit? It's so easy to flip the switch and leave a profit. So as well, the hotel gets the profit. What do you care? All you need to become is a person who leaves a profit. I talked to a man who runs a whole string of apartments. He said, guess what? Most people, when they rent an apartment, leave it, what? Trashed, worse than they found it. What kind of a reputation would that be? Whatever you touch turns to trash. Whatever you touch gets dirty. Nothing you touch gets better. See, that's a poor philosophy. No wonder it leads to poverty. Small lives. As one writer said, living lives of quiet desperation. This is where it all begins. Leave a profit when you can. Turn out the lights. Doesn't matter what it is. Become profit-minded. Profits are better than wages because profit has the potential to make a fortune. Wages has the potential to make a living. So I teach kids, take part of your wages. If you earn the money, take part of it for charity and part of it to see if you can't make a profit. And there's all kinds of ways. My book's going to be full of all kinds of ways kids can make money. I teach kids how to have two bicycles, one to ride and one to rent. You know, it doesn't take long to get into business. You don't have to be a genius. Halfway bright, you can start showing a profit. Now, here's the next 10 cents called passive capital. Meaning, let somebody else use the capital. You provide it. You're passive. They're active. And let them pay you interest. Profits and interest. Unique way to make a fortune. In fact, there's a Bible philosophy. I teach teenagers this Bible philosophy. Here's what it teaches. The borrower is servant to the lender. Wow. So where is the power position? Not a spender. A lender. And if I've taught teenagers well, if you ask them, among some of the things you want to be, you know, when you grow up, you know, as years pile on, what would you like to be? I'm telling you, among some of the things that they would like to be, if they've sat in on my classes or gotten some of my material, they will say, I want to be one of them lenders. Powerful position. Let somebody else use your capital. Touch something and leave a profit. It's not just wrapped up in money and economics. This helps to teach all other scenarios of life on profit and capital and expenditures, what to do with your time and what to do with your life and as well as what to do with your money.